Hi, my name is Musu, and I look like this. But when I go out, I look like this. Thus, women I know in my everyday life have asked me for my advice, so here I am. Today's topic is part one of a three-part series that will be discussing hair extensions in depth. Many of you ladies, if you've come from my previous videos, know that I have expressed my love for hair extensions. Over the past couple of years, I have perfected my hair extensions routine, and as a result, I was able to be reasonably fashionable, but still fully functional in my day-to-day -day life. My hair extensions did not get in the way of my work or school. I was able to give those my full attention. And although I may not look like your favorite Instagram model, I still look beautiful and well put together. My natural hair was even able to flourish underneath my wigs and weaves. So if you're looking for a place where you still wanna look beautiful and you have a hectic lifestyle and you're a woman on a budget, this video is for you. Hair extension quality comes in many different forms, but for the sake of simplicity, I will be dividing hair extensions or hair quality types into three categories. Category one, synthetic hair. Category two, human hair. And category three, virgin slash raw hair. All three hair types are important in your life at different times. On this episode, we'll be talking about the best hair to use in your everyday life, and that is virgin slash raw hair. Now, we all know that virgin or raw hair can cost a pretty penny, so why would this type of hair extension or this grade of quality be the best grade for your everyday life? I'll tell you why. This is because virgin slash raw hair can hold up to the daily wear and tear of your life. Most women in society generally live a very busy, hectic lifestyle. We work, go to school, exercise, take care of the kids, cook, clean, do homework, etc. We are very busy, multitasking, multi-talented people. Thus, we need hair extensions that can work with this type of fast-paced lifestyle. Normally, the average everyday woman does not have hours to spend on their hair every day. We have a particular day, which is either wash day, or a day where you're getting your hair braided, or a day when you're going to your hairstylist, and you will dedicate that time, but you have to work to set that specific time aside. Besides that, time is precious and life is constantly moving. You need hair that can keep up with your lifestyle and most importantly, hair that will still look nice while you actively live through the hustle and bustle of everyday life. This type of hair quality should last you no less than a year. Find a company that you can trust and that can supply you with consistently good quality hair. Remember, this type of hair extension is going to be very expensive, so you must, it is imperative, that you must find a good supplier. Can't find one on your own? Make sure to check out the description box below. Now that we've talked about the grade of hair that is best for the everyday woman, let's talk functionality of the hairstyle. I work in a field that is very labor intensive. And oftentimes when I walk into work, I have many of my black colleagues who walk into work with 30 inch hair. And so as the day progresses, they get tired, they get sweaty, they get itchy, and in the middle of the shift, they take off their wig and put it in their bag. And oftentimes, they will just walk around with their braids because they feel as though they are free. Remember, it's a very hands-on, very labor-intensive position. So by the time we're walking back out, some of our colleagues who are not black are shocked, like, oh my goodness, what happened? Like the transformation, she had 30 inch hair and now she has these very shortly braided styles, which isn't necessarily a bad thing at all. But what I wanna point out is that if they had an everyday hairstyle that is functional to their life, they wouldn't have to take off the wigs and put it in their bag. So I would like you guys to ask yourself this question before you purchase your wig or go to get your weave installed. This question should apply whether it is a tape-in weave 
whether it is micro lengths, whether it is a sew-in, and for your wigs as well. The next point I would like to make is about choosing color. I am going to be 100% honest with you all. Color hair that is normally color that is outside the normal spectrum is for wealthy women. It's for women with disposable income, right? So we see celebrities with cotton candy hair every other day. The average woman does not have money to spend on dying virgin hair every other day. I'm just gonna be honest with you. Leave the color hair for special occasions. For everyday life, if your everyday life, I'm talking about going to school, going home, taking care of the kids, just everyday normal life. Go with a natural color because natural colors are always going to be cheaper for you. If you choose not to stick to a natural color, let's say you want honey blonde highlights or you want blue hair, you need to stick to that hair color for an entire year or at least six months. So every six months, if you have ex extra money to splurge, do every six months. But honestly, if you do not have money, stick to one color a year or a natural color, which would be 1B, you could even do a jet black, you can even do a two for some people who can get away with it. But stay far away from the bright yellows, the bright oranges, the purples, the very unnatural colors. Here is a topic that people often neglect when talking about hair extensions for the everyday woman. Texture, pattern, and density. As I have continued to reiterate during this whole topic, you want to consider your lifestyle and occupation when choosing the texture, density, and pattern of your hairstyle. The busier your lifestyle, the looser the curl pattern should be. I often hear that a lot of women recommend for black women to oh choose a wig and weave that fits your curl pattern you don't love yourself i will be the first to admit that i have damaged every kinky curly hair that i have purchased and that's a shame i have bought 30 inches type 4a hair and you can often see me wearing it in these photos and it matches my hair to a t but when it comes down to maintenance I don't want to do it. According to the Falco's first movement, it is always better to pour your time and effort into your real curly hair rather than your hair extensions. Please keep that in mind. For density, choose a density you can commit to for a year. And for texture, pattern and texture is two different things. For texture, a lot of women or a lot of black women will choose hair textures that are silkier or straighter. But here is what I would recommend. Go with a kinky straight. A lot of women don't know that if you go with a super long kinky straight, you will definitely be the standout in a crowd. It just brings out the outer beauty that black women have when you have hair extensions that look the most natural. People will stop and stare. As you can see, my sister has waist length hair. She attracts tons of attention. Now, if you get hair extensions that match that, even flat ironed, you can still see the texture throughout the hair. I remember when I bought my first extensions and the type of extensions I bought was a very coarse texture. I wanted something that looked so close to me. And I remember that as I would walk to the bus stop, people would stop me and ask me if I was mixed. They were just like, Yo, you are so gorgeous. Your hair is so gorgeous. Are you mixed with anything? And at that time I didn't have a closure or I just had regular leave out. So you could see how it enhances the natural beauty that black women already have. If you cannot afford a very coarse texture or a very kinky texture, try going for a body wave, a deep wave, and that you're going to flat iron if you would like, but please stay away from those straights that have no coarse texture. You can't even see the texture in the bundles. They're just sleek and straight. Stay far away from those. Make sure to gravitate towards hair 
that has more visible coarseness slash kink to it. It will make you look more unique, it will bring out your true beauty, and it will blend so much easier with your natural hair. Next, we have installation. We're going to talk about the installation process and which would be best for women on a budget. When you are installing your hair extensions, it will always be cheaper to learn to install your hair extensions yourself. That's right, that means no going to stylists to install your hair. Instead, gravitate towards hairstylists that will provide you with services that can allow you to do your own hair at home. What do I mean by this? I mean, there are forms of hairstyles that can allow you to install your hair extensions at home, such as clip-ins, U-part wigs, full wigs, or custom wigs with elongated closures or silk base closures. With all wigs, I recommend that they fit correctly. It is so important, you guys, to have wigs in U-part wigs that fit correctly. It will make the biggest difference. If you get a custom U-part wig, it will look like a sew-in, where you can then install clips onto the U-part wig to clip them on, or you can braid up your hair and sew it down, whichever fits your preference and whatever is your ability. I've only ever had a sew-in installed twice in my life, believe it or not. All my other hairstyles that you see that I wear my hair, is installed by me. My link is in the description below to my website where you can find out how you can go about getting that information. All of my full wigs fit very well as well. I do not struggle with lumpy wigs or wigs that look unbelievable. For leave outs, your blending technique is so imperative, it's so important. Whether your hair is curly or whether the hair extensions are straight. If you need help with proper blending techniques, if you need help with your leave out care, the waiting room NHB is the place to go. It's going to help you learn to not only manage your leave out, but also learn how to properly grow your hair long underneath your wigs and your U parts in the comfort of your home. The last thing I would like to talk about is budgeting. Remember I said that virgin hair is the best type of hair for black women to purchase for day-to-day -day life. But many of you are looking at me like, how will I afford that? Well, there's certain times during the year where the sales are high, okay? You wanna pay attention to those. You also want to save. I have a budgeting worksheet. Once again, the link is below. You can click and go to my site where I'll have all this for you in one bundle with a budgeting worksheet where you can keep track of your savings as well as techniques to save so that you can reach your goal to get your hair extensions. So I hope that my tips have helped some of y'all out there. Let me know if this video was helpful and thank you so much for tuning in.